So while most people nowadays are meeting their boyfriend or girlfriend or significant other on dating apps, it hasn't always been the best place to find something meaningful. Surveys show that while more and more of us are engaging in dating apps at some point or another, the majority of us would still rather meet our partner organically through friends or social circles, or maybe you meet at a concert of one of your favorite artists. Ah, oh, what a time. Well, I'm gonna help you with that right now. I'm gonna give you five great places for you to meet someone, and I'm gonna go through why each place I mention is advantageous for you. Before we get into that, I am doing one-to-one -one sessions, so if you wanna start leveling up your dating life, then click the link below. So the first place on the list, and we're going a bit old-fashioned here, is finding someone at your workplace. Now, now, now. Hear me out. I know we're in a hashtag Me Too era, so there might be some concerns. I mean, if we're honest, Me Too was more about exposing men as opposed to women, so you probably don't have to be that worried about it. But the workplace is the number one place that couples over decades have met and is still one of the best places that people meet the person they're gonna marry. But here's the thing. You're gonna have to have a little bit more courage than the women who came before you. It's likely you're gonna have to initiate in some way, you know, make the first move a little bit, or at least least you're gonna have to make a bit more of an effort to let the guy you know at your workplace that you're open and maybe interested in him. Why? Because any decent guy that you work with will have a level of awareness of the current social climate. Approaching a female colleague at work romantically is under heavy scrutiny right now, especially from a man to a woman. I think it was Netflix that have put in their policies now that colleagues can't hold eye contact for longer than five seconds. Because because any eye contact over five seconds is apparently sexual harassment. Wow, I mean, God forbid you have to interview someone just looking at the floor the entire time. Most decent guys don't want to come across as a male predator to you in the workplace. The truth is, if you're somewhat of an attractive woman, the likelihood is there's probably at least one or two guys that you work with who would love to take you out, but they're scared to do anything about it. Like, honestly, guys are legitimately terrified. But the reality is the workplace is still a really great place to meet someone. Because A, you have at least one passion in common, you know, if what you do, what you do for work is a passion of yours and is a passion of theirs. The second reason why it's still really good is because you would have built up a rapport with them under an environment where there's no romantic pressure. So you would have already known something about them. It means you're more likely to have shown each other who you really are as opposed to putting on a mask because you're on a date and you're trying to impress the person across the table. And actually the third reason is that you will get to see qualities in them that you might find attractive in the work that they do. You get to see if they exhibit any qualities that you really like, like being reliable, being responsible. Do they perform well? Are they ambitious? There's a lot of investigating you can do about a guy at work and you can be a ninja about it. So that's worth keeping an eye out. And if you see someone you like, make a move. The next great place to meet someone is paid dating apps. Whoa, 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 okay. What happened to meeting someone organically? Yes, I know this isn't technically an organic way of meeting someone, but it's still a really good place to meet someone who wants something serious and meaningful. Why? Specifically because it's a paid app. All the free dating apps are oversaturated with guys who are just looking to hook up. Whereas no one who's looking for something easy and quick are actually going to pay for an app or pay for a subscription, especially for something that may not even happen. People who pay to use dating apps are usually the kind of people who are just tired of having something quick, casual, people looking for hookup culture, and they're looking for something more serious. Now it is very likely that guys on these apps will be a little bit older than the guys on the regular apps. But hey, from what I hear, ladies love an older man, right? And another reason why paid dating apps or services are better isn't just because people aren't on there to waste time, but they're also not looking to be anyone's pen pal. None of this, let's talk for four weeks and then you finally meet up to only then find out that there's no chemistry. Most people who are paying are pretty open to meeting for a coffee or a drink sooner than most because they probably have enough experience to know that real connection isn't formed over a screen, but over real interaction. Though one thing I would always recommend, if you've matched with someone and you're both open to meeting up with each other relatively soon, I always recommend a FaceTime first. Not just to make sure that, you know, they're not actually crazy before you actually invest to go meet with them, but also just to make sure that they are who they say they are. Because just because it's a paid service doesn't mean there can't be one or two weirdos lurking out there. 
This next awesome place to meet someone, which I would say is the best place to be meeting new people, is at salsa bars or salsa clubs. Now, if you've ever been part of a salsa club or like the salsa community, you already know why it's some of the best places to meet people. But if you haven't, let me give you a short summary of the environment that you'd be stepping into should you choose this route. One, everyone is so friendly, especially to newcomers. If you don't know how to do salsa at all, you don't need to fret because 90% of people are happy to go at your own pace. They'll be happy to guide you. Two, when you partake in a salsa club, people tend to change partners every other song or every few songs. So you could literally go by yourself and organically meet and end up chatting to about 20 people in one night. You know how in a normal club, randomly going up to someone you like the look of is not only nerve wracking, but it's really unusual and can even be soul destroying if it doesn't go well. At salsa, it's the most normal thing. It's part of the salsa culture and customs to go up to someone and just politely offer them to dance with you. And the thing is, men go up to women, women go up to men. There's no kind of only the man has to do it. Like, listen, just forget the Western society mindset for a second. I live in London where making eye contact with someone random on the tube feels like a crime. But when you step into a salsa club, it's like you're stepping into Brazil during carnival. Everyone's there to have a good time. Everyone's there to welcome you faces and it's all about being part of a community about learning how to dance this thing that we all have a care interest and passion about and four it's so easy to approach a guy because you can just guise it as you just want to have a dance with him and that's it and while you dance you can see if there's a vibe there you can see if there's any initial chemistry you can see what those hips do you know hips don't lie and if you have a dance with him and you feel there's no vibe you say thank you so much for the dance have a nice evening and you move on so easy no risk. And the amazing thing about Salsa is that there is a Salsa community in almost every major city in the world. So even if you go to a new country, you don't even speak a lick of the language. You find the Salsa scene and it's a home away from home. You will meet people and they will welcome you. So if you haven't yet, hit a Salsa class or two. The next awesome place to meet a guy organically is at a members club. You know, like a private membership club, you know, not one that just any punter could just walk into randomly during the week. A nightclub has sticky floors, sweaty bodies, and kind of reeks of desperation. A members club has industry professionals, nice lounges to sit in, and quite frankly, class. The kind of men at members clubs are very different to the kind of men you will find at the normal clubs. The environment is already set in a membership club. You know, the ambiance, the drinks, the talking. Now you may be wondering, okay, Kit, how much is this going to cost me? Because a girl can't be out here chucking her rent money away. The truth is, it doesn't have to cost you anything. There's some private members club that cost you a monthly fee, some it's an annual fee, and some there's no fee. You literally just have to sign up. Of course, the caliber of the club is going to be reflected in the price. So if you're looking for a specific kind of man, you may have to make a little bit of an investment. As you should, because you're not just looking for any man, you're looking for your man. This next great place to meet someone organically is at the gym. If you meet a guy at the gym, it's very likely that he's a focused individual and he has a level of self-discipline. And not only that, but if you're an avid gym goer yourself, then you guys already have something in common. Now, yes, I know a lot of people do go to the gym, but how many people do we see actually go to the gym? Some are there just to take photos. Some are there because it's a social space for them to just chat to some people. But those aren't the ones that we want to focus on. It's the ones that are there because they have a genuine awareness and commitment to maintaining their health and their fitness and being in great shape. And in this environment, it's so easy to start a casual conversation. It could start out as you asking him, oh, hey, can you just help me with this machine? Or, hey, are you a personal trainer? Which is, you know, a nice little compliment to his ego. One day you might train legs together and then another day you might train back together. People who go to the gym become regulars and that's how they meet people. That's how they start making friends, making connections and start, you know, interacting with one another. Not to mention, it's not a party environment because that environment is all about drinks and sex appeal. Which, don't get me wrong, that can be fun to partake in, but might make it harder to find something meaningful in that kind of place. If you're looking for a guy who sparks up your love life, make sure you subscribe to this wonderful tribe. And as always, keep it slick. Bye.